الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put tawakkal ala Allah azza wa jal that as believers we put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all of our affairs and have as much taqwa as you can and as we've already mentioned ittaqullah haytha ma kunt you know fear Allah wherever you may be and whenever whenever and wherever try your best to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa taqullah ma istata'tum all these ayats and a hadith mentioned for us to fear Allah as much as possible fear Allah as much as we're able to fear Allah wherever we are and whenever in any time and also what tawakkal ala Allah and put your trust in Allah azza wa jal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can rectify your condition Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can increase your risk Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can bless you with another child after a miscarriage Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can help you defeat the shaitan and defeat those sins that are anchoring you pulling you away from the khair and your potential that you have that's with Allah azza wa jal go to Allah first your imam can advise you your sheikh can advise you and give you the hukum but no one can change that state except for with your striving and with the permission of Allah to walk on Allah azza wa jal put your affairs with Allah put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i want to mention a hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam just bring about a few fawaid of this hadith as a reminder for myself and a reminder for others and this hadith is urging us to put trust in Allah and that Allah will protect and preserve you subhanahu wa ta'ala ya rab an abi abbas abdullah ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma قال كنت خلف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يوما فقال يا غلام اني اعلمك كلمات احفظ الله يحفظك احفظ الله تجده تجاهك اذا سالت فاسال الله واذا استعنت فاستعن بالله واعلم ان الامه لو اجتمعت على ان ينفعك بشيء لم ينفعك الا بشيء قد كتبه الله تعالى لك وان اجتمعوا على ان يضروك في شيء لم يضروك الا بشيء قد كتبه الله تعالى عليك رفيت الاقلام وجفت الصحف رواه الترمذي in this narration collected in tirmidhi an abi an uh, abi abbas abdullah bin abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma he said i was behind the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and i believe they were on a riding animal perhaps a donkey showing us the humility of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that this is something that was regular as we know from the hadith of muadh ibn jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu who said kuntu khalf an-nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam ala himar he said i was behind the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam on a donkey or kuntu radif an-nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam ala himar letting us know that from the ada from the humility of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he rode a donkey he was a prophet of allah he could have you know always asked for a horse definitely and had the camel and he could have had people carry him as many of the kings and others who have been given a station in this dunya they want to have so much ta'zim they want to be considered great 
and remembered by the people in pictures and 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 and, and, and glorified almost. Some of them want to be worshipped. Some of them have been worshipped in the past. But not the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was humble. And here we have Abdullah bin Abbas reporting this hadith that he was behind the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on a, on a donkey. Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. So he said, I was behind the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one day. And he said to me, O oh Gulam, O oh boy, O oh young boy, verily I'm going to teach you something, teach you a kelima, teach you a statement, teach you something very important. Preserve Allah and Allah will preserve you. Meaning preserve the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His boundaries the borders, what he orders us to do. Do those things, and Allah will protect you. And preserve the boundaries of Allah, and you will find him there for you. You'll find him wherever you are. You know, you'll find him there for you, in all of your situations, in all of your issues. SubhanAllah, listen to this prophetic advice. We need to practice this. And I'm encouraging myself first and foremost to try to strive and practice this by being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, preserving His commandments. Because I want Allah in my corner, wherever I am, whichever direction I'm going, whatever decision I'm trying to make, I need Allah. As you need Allah. Allah tujidhu tujahaka. Preserve the commandments of Allah and you'll find Him You'll find him there for you. And if you ask, ask of Allah. And if you seek support and refuge and help, assistance, then seek it from Allah. And know that if the nations gathered together to benefit you with something they couldn't benefit you with anything except what Allah has written for you and if they got together to cause you harm they cannot cause you harm except with what Allah has written against you meaning written 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 for you to happen to you And the pin has been lifted, and the suhuf, the records for, have, have, have become dry, meaning it's, the book is closed. That aspect of the decree. So no one can hurt you except with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can help you except with the, for the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So where should we turn to? Who should we turn to? Who should we ask as the Prophet sallallahu said? Who should we beg as the Prophet sallallahu said? Who should we cry to? Who should we turn to? To Allah. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us in all of our affairs. Nothing is beneath Him. And nothing is he unable to do. Meaning Allah can do everything. He's over all things omnipotent. He has the power to do everything. Put your trust in Allah. Allah will help you in your affairs. Come back to Allah. And Allah will make the path easy for you. So in that, there's immense benefit that we, we should ask our Lord for affairs, for all of our affairs. We should put our trust in Him that He's going to assist us. We should preserve the boundaries that Allah has set before us so that Allah will protect us. And all the worship goes to Allah. So when you supplicate, supplicate to Allah. As the Prophet Allah. If you ask, ask Allah.
Allah will answer you. وَدُعَاهُ ibadah, كَمَا قَالَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. Supplication is worship. So ask your Lord. Get the edger of worshiping Him and Him alone and putting your affairs with your Lord and trusting that He's going to make a way out for you. Also striving. As the ulama, they say, tawakkul, tawakkul ala Allah azza wa jal, it's itimad ala Allah wa fi'la asbab. That it is putting, leaving all of your affairs with Allah. And making effort to achieve and attain that. So for example, if you're trying to have your wealth increased, you should strive within the bounds of the Sharia and put your trust in Allah. If you're unemployed and you want work, look for work. At the same time supplicating, asking the Lord, begging your Lord to make things easy for you and make a halal uh, subsistence for you. If you're in need of marriage, you need a, a righteous husband or the man who's looking for a righteous wife, make efforts. Ask the community. Ask those people who you trust and put your trust in Allah. Supplicate to Allah during the day and the night. Striving. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and help us with our our many, many struggles, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve you, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless us with al nafi ruskin tayyibu amalan muttaqabbilan hafadakumullah, and may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala bless us with jannah tafardos, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.